We are discussing the various approaches to staffing international operations, and in this topic, we are going to discuss the approach which is called the polycentric approach. Polycentric approach is in contrast with the ethnocentric approach. Ethnocentric approach, which means giving priority you, to your own ethnicity. Polycentric approach means giving priority to different ethnicities. Uh, ethnicities. Uh, so poly means multiple. Uh, multiple uh, ethnicities being preferred in your organization. That is the basic spirit of the polycentric approach. Uh, so in a polycentric approach, what happens is that the multinational organization, it treats its uh, subsidiaries as uh, separate units. So they give them a distinct national entity and that leads to some kind of decision making autonomy. So the subsidiary which is managing, operating in a foreign country will be given its own distinct national entity and its own uh, autonomy for decision making. And uh, for that applied to the human resource aspects and particularly to staffing would mean that the subsidiaries are usually managed by local nationals. So host country nationals will be managing a subsidiary in the uh, polycentric approach. And what happens is then that they are seldom promoted to the headquarters positions. So uh, for example, if, if a subsidiary, for example, McDonald's or Coca-Cola is operating in Pakistan, um, the, and, and it has got a polycentric approach, the management of Pakistani uh, division would be managed by Pakistanis themselves. But these Pakistanis, they, if, it will not be promoted to headquarters positions. So if, for example, McDonald is an American organization, you will probably not ever hear that people from McDonald's Pakistan have been promoted to a place in the headquarters in Americas. So that is a polycentric approach in which host country nationals, they are given autonomy and decision making in their particular own subsidiary, but they are not usually promoted to positions in the headquarters. So their career is basically limited up to the uh, home subsidiary, up to the uh, subsidiary which is working in their particular nationality. And uh, uh, similarly, parent country nationals are rarely transferred to the foreign subsidiary operation. So you wouldn't be hearing that there, are, there is a foreign manager in McDonald's or you wouldn't be hearing that there's a foreign manager in, in Coca-Cola. Most of the operations and decision-making positions are held by uh, Pakistani nationals and uh, they um, are not operated by people from the parent country organizations. What are the reasons for employing host country nationals? Uh, one of the reasons is that it eliminates the language barrier. Uh, so uh, in order to operate in a foreign country, you need to know their language. And the, if you appoint people from that same country, the language barrier is eliminated. Uh, it avoids the adjustment problem of expatriate managers and their families. So if you won't be sending people from the parent company, parent country to the host country, it means that the problem of managing expatriates will be totally eliminated. And it also removes the need for expensive cultural awareness training programs. So if you don't appoint people to, uh, to, the, to your foreign operations, you, know, you don't need to do that cultural aware awareness training program. So you can save your costs on, on that particular thing. So the reasons to appoint home country national, host country nationals is that you can save all these costs of cultural training, you can save the cost of uh, language learning, you can save the cost of expatriate management and their adjustment. And if their families are also coming, you need to adjust them and then you need to take care of various different aspects of their housing and education and entertainment, security, and you can save all these costs on that. What could be the disadvantages of a polycentric approach? Uh, bridging the gap between home country nationals, subsidiary man managers, and parent country 
national managers at the headquarters is something which is difficult. So uh, there would be a kind of fragmented approach. Uh, your headquarters would be managed by people from a different culture and your subsidiary would be managed by people from the host country. So uh, there could be lack of coordination between them. So it is difficult to make them uh, coherently and um, uh, properly aligned with each other because they differ from uh, the different uh, they differ on the basis of culture and management styles and therefore this uh, alignment would be difficult uh, this could lead to language barriers conflict uh, conflicting uh, national loyalties and a range of cultural issues may isolate headquarters staff from the subsidiaries. So uh, if, if you're not sending headquarters staff to work in the host country, definitely they won't be learning their language, they won't be learning about their culture. So they would be sitting at a distance with a language barrier, which may lead to, uh, and, and then they would not be understanding that what kind of national loyalties do people have from the host country, and that could lead to various different kind of clashes. So a polycentric approach uh, may lead to these kind of conflicts. So uska result kya hota hai? Ke the multinational enterprise, it could become a federation of independent national units with nominal links to the headquarters. So it becomes, an, it, it's not basically a, a multinational enterprise as, an, oh, as, as a single entity, it becomes a federation. Federation means that uh, various different blocks which are loosely connected with each other, but they do not work as a single wholesome uh, entity. Uh, that is okay if uh, the operations are managed properly. For example, uh, if, if the operations do not involve a lot of complexity, if the operations do not involve a lot of innovation, for example, Coca-Cola is managed quite well as a federation because what do they have to do? They have to make these beverages, which does not involve a lot of innovation, does not involve a, a lot of rapid change in technology kind of basic simple operations which just need distilling water and then adding some flavor to that and then bottling it up. So it is something which is pretty simple and which does not need a lot of coordination and control from the, uh, uh, from the parent country nationals. Uh, so that can be managed as a federation, but in an organization which, is, uh, which requires all these things, a polycentric approach may lead to different kind of disadvantages. Uh, then another disadvantage is that the home country nationals, they have limited opportunities of growth because they are not going to be promoted to the headquarters. So that means that country head is the, uh, is, is the uh, topmost position for a person who is uh, working in a subsidiary of a host country, of, of an organization uh, which is managed through polycentric approach. And uh, then as headquarters positions are held only by parent country nationals, uh, the limit, uh, the, the senior management group that has a limited exposure to the international operations because they don't send people from the parent country to the host countries. Unki jo senior manager hai jo headquarters mein baithi hui hai, unka exposure nahi hota international operations ke saan. And that constrains decision making and resource allocation. It might uh, constrain decision making and resource allocation. So these are the possible disadvantages of a polycentric approach.